What's up, everyone? Courtney Cox here, and hope you're all having a great week at home. Joining me now is Red Bull athlete, women's cyclocross national champion, Ellen Noble. Ellen, thanks so much for joining me. How are you holding up during all this craziness? I'm doing well, yeah, thanks. I, uh, it's been an interesting time, but have kind of fallen into a rhythm, so I'm, I'm doing all right, thanks. <laughs> well, you are a New England native from Maine. Are you staying there now? No, I'm actually in Arizona, so I, uh, I'm i doing better than most, I think, because I'm able to get outside in the sunshine, and it didn't snow here at all lately, so yeah, we're, do we're doing pretty well, <laughs> but my family's in Maine, so I know, uh, I know what it's been like lately. Yeah, the warm heat, uh, the, the, the dry heat for you, I I'm very jealous of right now, yeah. um, but your story's pretty incredible, cycling was really in your blood with your parents. You found cyclocross racing at 15. Can you explain what cyclocross really is all about? Yeah, cyclocross is a super dynamic, kind of fun, um, like high energy type of cycling. So it's kind of a hybrid between road biking and mountain biking. So we're doing an off-road course that's kind of short, usually like an average of eight minute laps. You'll do it for 45 to 60 minutes, but you're riding like more of a road style bike. So you have drop handlebars, narrow tires, um, you know, the road style frame, but just a little bit of traction on your tires. So um, kind of a fun part of the competition of cyclocross is that sometimes you'll approach something that a bike isn't made to ride. So you'll just pick up your bike and you'll run with it. So it's a lot of biking, a little bit of running and uh, usually centers around big crowds, um, adverse conditions, and usually a lot of beer. Well, you running through all that right there shows that you know a bike probably like no other, and riding a bike <laughs> hasn't been put on hold during this crazy time. Has that been keeping you sane, being able to get out there and get on the bike? Oh, yeah. I have, I have no idea what I would have done if we weren't allowed to ride. I mean, I would have figured something out. I would have been able to ride indoors, but it has been such a blessing to be able to get outside every day and just ride far and long and just kind of get away from everything has been, um, yeah, it's been a huge reprieve. <laughs> well, you bring in the indoor cycling and that's more my speed. I like to be on a bike that doesn't go anywhere. And I get mixed reviews on if that is an actual good workout. With your expertise, do you consider it a good workout? And if it's not, how can you kind of amp it up to get the blood pumping? I mean, I'm sweating the entire time, but how can you get the most out of an indoor cycling workout? Oh, I think indoor riding is great. I, I mean, I think some people would probably argue that it's not like proper cycling, but I, I totally think it is. I think if you're riding a bike, whether you're going anywhere or you're not, uh, I think that you're still, that you're still riding and it's a really good workout. It's hard. I mean, when I ride indoors, I'm always smoked. Um, trying to get the most out of an indoor workout, I think it's just really honing in on your motivation. It can be really hard to motivate when you're going to go stare at a wall or a computer screen. It's a little bit less motivating than getting outside and getting the fresh air. So huge factor is staying cool. Um, they say like the ideal room temperature is 55 degrees. That's not usually possible uh, unless you let all the heat out of your house. Um, <laughs> having a fan, having a cool drink and trying to keep it fun. I think keeping it fun, keeping it high energy, good music, all of that is vital. And the other thing with riding that I think is so important is just meeting yourself where you are and not waiting for the perfect moment to ride. If you have 20 minutes, hop on, go all out and get something, get something in rather than waiting for the day that you have two hours to ride. Well, uh, Maine is beautiful and taking this outside, it's great for rides. For you, mm -hmm. what's the best bike path to take for riders of all experience of all ages? Yeah, a huge resource in Maine is the Eastern Trail. Um, it, at least when I was living there, went from Southern Maine, like pretty far up into the state. I know it's a lot more developed now. Um, and it's like nice gravel, so it's you know, on asphalt, it's like a little bit more Maine than, uh, you know, like a well-paved path, but it's really nice. Even if you're not a super advanced bike handler, you can probably feel pretty confident on the path because it doesn't have anything crazy coming up, no crazy turns. Um, and it's just beautiful. You're just in the woods, just kind of never too far from anything, but you just feel really, really relaxed and really serene. A great way to just get away from cars and really just be around nature. Well, I bring up experience because around this time, it's it's a way for folks to figure out what new ways of getting active are for them. So what are, I guess, three things that if somebody wants to take up cycling that they need to do to be prepared and most importantly, to be safe? 
Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a bit, but really, I think one, we always talk about BC quick back with bikes. So you want to make sure that your bike is safe to ride because you can be the most safe rider yourself, but if your bike isn't up to the task, then you're going to be a risk to yourself and others. So A stands for air, B stands for brakes, C stands for chain, quick stands for quick release, which is what keeps your wheels on. And that's the four checks. So you want to make sure that you have enough air in your tires that you, if you pinch it, you don't hit the rim. You want to check your brakes to make sure that they actually stop the bike. You want to make sure that your chain is well lubed and that it's on the gears. And you want to make sure that your quick releases are attached so that your wheels won't fall off or, you know, kind of come loose. So that's the main thing that you want to make sure your bike like really, really quick is up to snuff. And really the other thing I'll say for people biking is it can feel really intimidating, especially like when there are pros or people that do on the bike path or on the road. Um, but don't feel intimidated because we all started somewhere. And so as long as you're being safe and you're not putting others at risk, you're doing it right. Well, something that would not be safe for me to do would be something that you're very uh, well known for, which is bunny hopping. I had to YouTube what exactly it was before talking with you. <laughs> how are you able to do that? And right now, how are you able to practice that? Yeah, um, yeah, bunny hopping, it, it just took a lot of practice and it took a lot of crashes to be totally, to be totally honest. I messed up a lot before I ever got it. Um, right now, mostly I'm able to ride, uh, like kind of out in the, out in the, um, deep in the desert. We're not like staying super close to town just to kind of try to get away from people and not be like, there are already so many people on the bike path that since I'm able to get out and I feel confident riding further away from the path, I'm trying to stay off of it. Um, but yeah, right now I'm mostly just riding my mountain bike. So I'm not, I'm not hopping barriers at the moment, but kind of trying to keep those, keep the skills and keep the mechanics that necessary to doing the jump, um, keep them fresh so that when we do get back between the tape on the race course, I'm still able to, I'm still able to hop. <laughs> well, once this is all over, what's on deck for you race wise? <sighs> Probably a lot of races, to be honest. Um, I think the entire U.S. calendar from March on, uh, like kind of through the end of August, was rescheduled into the fall, which is normally when I do most of my racing. So if and when we're able to race, we're going to have some catching up to do. So I think that there's going to be some really hard decisions to be made of which event we're going to go to um, and for which discipline, kind of whether or not it's even safe to go to the races is another big question. But um yeah, hope, hoping to still be able to make it to the World Cups. And once international travel is permitted, I'll be going over to Europe and racing there again. Uh, but there's there are so many races, I don't even really know if I could try to make a tentative schedule just because there's there's so much uncertainty at the moment. Well, I have to ask, do you have a dream place to race? You know, there's so many beautiful places that you could bring a bike. Is there a dream place for you? I've gotten to some pretty incredible places already. Um, so it's kind of hard to say, but I've always wanted to go to like British Columbia and ride in Whistler. So that would be, that would be a first for me and um, a pretty easy one to make happen, but I just never have. Uh, and then kind of anywhere in the Mediterranean would be unbelievable. I, I love the food. I love the culture. I love the, the terrain. Uh, and there are some really fun races that they have over there that I just haven't made it to yet. So maybe I think that would be, that would be a place I'd love to go. Absolutely. Well, Ellen, thanks so much for taking the time. And as soon as all of this craziness is over, once you're racing again, we are going to hop on and talk about what you have on the calendar since it probably will be packed and we'll have a lot to talk about. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.